Hello, fellows of PLC Next. My name is Frank and I'm working on the technical customer support at Fings Contact. Today I'd like to show you how the OPC client functionality does work on PLC Next and how it can be configured. But let's have first a look what the OPC UI client feature is and how the demonstration project works. Next to the pure UA client communication, we like to have also a secure communication between the server and the client. PLC Next support their various of configuration possibilities, but we like to use a signed and encrypt communication channel. Therefore, we have to use the certificates coming from the identity store of the UA server. They have to copy the server certificate to the trust store on the UA client. Therefore, the client will trust the connection coming from the server. The same the other way around. We have to copy the client certificate from the identity store of the client to the trust store of the server. In the following, I will demonstrate how we can configure the pure UA client communication as well how to copy those certificates to the proper way via the web-based management. Okay, let's start. Well, in this demonstration setup, we are just using a PSNX control as OPC UA server. In that case, a 2152. But of course, this could be any other device, like an energy meter or other smart devices, which implements a UA server. However, this server does expose a few UA items for the read direction and for the write direction. On both variants, we have uh, using each an integer value or an array of integer. For the client, we are using a 2152 as well with activated OPC UA client functionality. The client will write and subscribe those values. Basically, this implements a round trip. So if we write on these variables, they are copied internally on the server and read back for the UA client. Well, very simple setup and the configuration is also that simple. Start creating the OPC UA server project. Open PSNX Engineer. The application is very simple and based on the excellent control 2152. I'm using a template 2023.0 and I already created a few variables. Read variables, which the client can subscribe and some white variables where the client can write some values. On both, I have a primitive type integer and a field area of integer. That those variables can be exposed from the server, we have to mark the OPC UA checkbox. In addition, we have to activate the option that all those marked variables are visible for the OPC UA client. Later on for the certificates, it's important that we define if we want to use a DNS name or IP. As I will establish a connection based on the IP, I will enter here the IP address of the server. Otherwise, it might happen that the client will refuse the connection. Okay, quiet and start the project. Let's check if the OPC UA server is running properly. For that, I'm using a test client. Here, the UA expert coming from the company Unified Automation. Go to the server node and add a new connection. Add a new server, enter the IP address or the DNS. This is the IP of my server. Server appears. Yes. And authenticate. We can accept the self signed certificate and ignore the warning. Now we can see on this side that the OPC UA items are available. We can add them 
and check the values. The node is later on important. For PLS Nexus server, we don't necessarily need them because we know the node ID. But for other US server, this could be a very easy possibility to retrieve the node ID. Close the server project and open PLS Next Engineer once again. Important for the client, you have to use version 2023.3 or higher. Also for the client, I already created a very simple application, which is based on the 2152, as well as for the template 2023.0. I have also here four variables, which are the correspondent variables for the server. But here I renamed them. I named them for the client. There's the same data type, so integer as primitive type, and an error of integer for the fields. We have to activate, as well on the client side, the OPC checkbox and activate that the marked variables are visible. Also here we have to consider the endpoints which are part of the certificate. As I will not use a DNS server or the DNS names, I have to enter also here the IP address of the client. Now we can configure the client. We have general settings, client settings, here we can decide if we want to use default values for the store names and if you want to use the default values for the security settings. All those values are described in the PLSNX Info Center as well as in the PLSNX Engineer Help. We stay for the defaults. Also we can configure here timeout settings for the client and of course here we keep the default settings. Have a look to the client configuration. We have a possibility to configure different client connections. In that case, we have only one, so I will call it test one. And for the test server, I'm using not a DNS, I will using the IP address of the server, which is this IP. The server does have credentials and those are the login values for the PLS Next device. Choose the security mode. I'm using here sign and encrypt. All those settings are highly depending on the used US server. Please check back if you're using a different server which features this server supports. Security policy, I'm using the best available. The server connection for the client is now finished. Go back to configuration and create a new group by clicking in the time, cycle time field. Press enter. Now we created a new variable group. On every group, we can define the cycle time and define the kind of group if we want to subscribe or write variable values. Now we can come to the variable mapping. We are mapping always a local variable to a remote variable. Let's start with the integer read variable because we are subscribing. The system automatically detects that this type is an integer and it's related to the test server. If we define multiple connections, we can configure on which UA server this variable can be found. The remote variable identifier is a node ID on the UA server. The node ID can be found on the documentation of the server or maybe browsing with a UA expert. In that case, I reading the read variable and I can find the node ID here. Just copy the string and as a node ID is kind of string, start with S and then copy this value. All those information are described in the help of PLS Next Engineer and once again the PLS Next Info Center. Go ahead with the 
array, read variable. Here, don't be confused, it detects the base type of the array. Do the same. Enter the corresponding node ID. And now our subscribe group is already finished. Go back to the configuration field, add a new group, go to the group settings and change, change to white. We're doing here basically all the same. I'm choosing the client write variable with the integer and choosing the array client write and add the node ID. Now we finished the write group configuration, but before we can use the client feature, we have to activate the client in the web-based management. For that, open a browser and open the IP address of the client PLC. Log into the web-based management and go to the configuration section. Open the system services and activate the OPC UI client feature. Apply and reboot. The PLC is now restarting. After the PLC restarted, we can log in once again into the web-based management. and verify that the service is really running. Keep in mind that the client does need a license. Even when the client feature is activated, it will only run for test purposes for hours. Otherwise, for permanently use, you have to buy the UA client feature in the PLC Next store and activate the service on the PLC. This is not described in this tutorial, but described in the PLC Next store app. Okay, keep in mind that we have now to copy the certificates from the client side to the server and from the server to the client side. Let's start with the client. Go to the security tab, certificate authentication. Open the identity store and copy the OPC UA client self-signed certificate on your PC. Keep the browser tab open and open another tab to open the web-based management of the server. Log into the server. And open here the certificate authentication section as well. Open the Identity Store and download as well the server certificate to your PC. Now open the Trust Store. On the Trust Store, you can add now the client certificate. Browse for it. Choose the client certificate. Now we are done on the server side. Switch back to the client. Open as well here the Trust Store. On the Trust Store, we have to add on the section for the OPC UA client, know the certificate of the server. Done. Know the certificate configuration of the client is also done. Open once again PLSNX Engineer. and download your application to the PLC. Finished. Have a look on the notification. You can open it on the debug bar, on the cockpit or on the web-based management. Whichever way you choose, you should now see a few messages from the client. That's a client, for example, begins a connection and that's a client connected now to the server. Status changed. Connected. Now the client is connected to the server 
and we can now read write the items from the server. Let's test it. Open our variables and open them in the watch window. When I write this value to the server, the server copies the value to the read variable, so round trip. Okay, done. The same now for the array type variables. I open the first item. Now, so here we can see the value is copied. So the connection is running and valid and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, enjoy the client feature and have a great day.